All right, what's up guys? So today I wanna to talk to you about props, but it's more than that. I know this has been beaten to death by people like Kebab and just everybody really, but I promise the things I'm about to tell you, you haven't heard them. That's the reason why I'm making the video, otherwise I just let it lie. I wanna do a maybe three video series about how I get my quads to fly like they do. So I'm not saying it's good or bad, but see, First of all, here's how banged up my quad is, right? With the this and the mounting like this, but this is pure butter. Um, and so one of the reasons why like Betaflight 401, I wasn't liking it is because I'm such a big stickler when it comes to the feel of a quad. If my quad doesn't feel right, I can't hit two inch gaps or four inch gaps <laughs> upside down. <laughs> can't you know do little sit knife edge moves <laughs> basically what I'm saying is the quad is doing 50% of my flying and my fingers are doing the other 50% anyway we're getting off track I want to do three there's basically three things that allow me to fly the way I do other than you know practice one is my props props and motors but mostly props Two, and this is not just for me, this is for everyone. So steel, willy, drib, props is, I think props are the number one way to tune your quad and also the number one thing that gives your quad its flight characteristics is props, hands down. So the second video is gonna be about transmitters. I think that's the second biggest thing to that determines how a person flies, again, other than their own practice and their style or whatever, their brain, basically. So let's get into some prop talk, and here we go. So just to, let me get the lights going, just to jump ahead a little bit, the main topic that I'm gonna be talking about is not so much the pitch of the prop, although that has something to do with it, I'm gonna talk about the most important factor of a prop is the two-dimensional shape. So the left to right shape, what it would look like if you draw it. And notice these, notice this, a lot wider, right? These are way more responsive than this. These are considered to be better than this. So why are these more responsive than this? Is that a good thing, you know? Which one's better for prop wash? We're gonna talk about prop shape because we wanna talk about the width of the propeller that no one talks about. Everyone's talking about pitch and length. The width is very important and I'll get, let's talk about why right now after I pick that up. <laughs> Here we have some popular props. The newly most popular would be the Lemon Lime Ethics S4 prop right here. Why do people love this prop? Because it's ultra responsive, right? What I wanna talk about is why this prop is responsive and is that a good thing, okay? I personally, as you can see, I fly them here on this setup. I don't like this prop as much as I like something like the Wind Dancer 5043, which is known to be a not so responsive prop. But I personally, again, feel that this is not smooth. This is a ADH, a hyperactive prop. This prop is good for snap rolling and, you know, stealing it up, basically. Doing steel style stuff. Steel style stuff. Um, but this is a juicy prop. So can you fly juicy with this? Of course you can. But again, I'm talking about how my quad is 50% juicy out the gate. It's 50% smooth out the gate. So I don't have to get too crazy with the with the sticks to make it do what I want. I mean, this prop is not only shallower, but if you notice the the width of the prop, this is much wider than this. And that is a good thing for grip. So whenever I'm flying a quad with four of these propellers, I feel like it it holds on like thick 
tire tread, right? Like a tractor tire. I shouldn't say tractor tire, but like a tire with thicker tread. Whereas this is like a bald, you know, NASCAR racing tire that's, you know, ultra responsive. But this one will get you where you want to go without any hiccups. So I can grip into the air and I can just, you know, gently kind of flow around. And that's difficult on these props, especially with feed forward. I have my feed forward at zero just because I don't want, again, that's another thing that I'm gonna probably talk about. I don't want any influence on the quad other than what my fingers are doing. So if I wanna, you know, roll to the right and I accidentally go too fast, I don't want feed forward jacking up the P and really exaggerating that when it's gonna be exaggerated by my thumb already. So I think feed forward, I have a little bit on y'all, but for everything else, I think it's unnecessary and ruins the quad. So now when we go to the old school, what we thought was a responsive prop, which still is extremely responsive, notice how thin it is, right? So the thinner the prop, uh, cuts through the air easier, up and down. So for rolling, for pitching maneuvers, that's when the, the flat part of the prop needs to cut through the air, right? So this one gives you a more exaggerated uh, stick response, where this one has to push this, you know, think about it, just imagine if it's in water, right? It's like a paddle. This one, when you roll, when you pitch, it has a wider surface area that has to push through the air. And what that does is it kind of dulls the response. Yeah, but the translation in camera footage is smoothness. So when I, you have to do more, I guess, deliberate movements to get the quad to move. And that means less shake, less twitchy thumbs show up in your feed. So if you wanna try this for yourself, just go ahead and throw a pair of uh, wind dancers, the 5043s or 5042s on your quad and fly it around and then immediately swap to the T-motors. And you'll notice such a huge difference. It feels like you've increased your, your P gains or even sometimes it feels like you've increased your roll and uh, pitch rate. Also, uh, this is c kind of conjecture, but I feel like this one also increases yaw authority. But I haven't tested that. I just kind of thought of that right now and I'm saying it. So you wanna, you wanna go up, you wanna kinda sit here and then come back down. Like in my previous video, what I told you Flight One filters are great for, then this is the prop for you. If you want to, you know, wop, 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 snap, Rubik's Cube, do all kind of stuff like that, then these two props are good for you. This is somewhere in the middle. This prop, the 5x4.3, was such a classic because it was a perfect in the middle prop. So many people liked it because it, gave you the best of all worlds without giving you the negatives of any. So it was a, I call it a straight down the middle prop. You can't go wrong with it. And I think that's what made it popular. Props like this with the really steep 4.9 pitch and the 5.1 length, th these can get you in trouble and you're, def you're definitely gonna get prop wash with them. So I, I didn't even mention prop wash, but this prop has less prop wash than this on you know on a typical setup why because of the shorter prop it's a 4.8 less surface area why because it's thinner less dirty air less clean air even than this and basically those two reasons it's also lighter so it, it can control spin up faster i run this prop also on the my light light setup because it's, I think it's 587 grams and that's where this prop really shines. So that's, I'm gonna chop this video together. Uh, if you guys like this kind of stuff, I can expand on it further. Um, if you don't like this stuff, let me know you don't like it because I have an endless <laughs> amount of things I can talk about. So I just wanna help people that, you know, they, people ask me, how do I do this? How do you do that? So I saw your trick tutorial, but I can't get there. I can't do this. So I'm going to focus on the basics. Let me know what you think and we'll see you on the next one. Boom, boom. Peace.